Today's video is brought to you by external webcams because you're going to need it if you're going to buy this razor blade advanced. Please hang up and try again. Hey, what's up everyone? Louis Tran here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the mid 2021 razor blade 15 advance with the Intel 11th gen core i7 processor with the Nvidia RTX 3070 GPU on an FHD display. Razer is known to be the Apple of PCs for the build quality of their premium gaming laptops, headphones, and accessories at premium prices, but is notorious for having poor quality control and customer service. I actually do own a handful of Razer products and my own experiences with the good and the bad of Razer. In fact, one of my very first laptop reviews on this channel was the Razer Blade Stealth from 2016, which is still working just fine to this day that my brother still uses. Aside from having to swap out the battery earlier this year for not holding a charge anymore after five years, it's been working great. Now, this latest Razer Blade 15 Advance, on the other hand, well, just powering on after running a few updates, the laptop ran extremely hot. And that's after the updates were completed. It was burning hot to the touch after a cold boot within five minutes of logging into Windows. On top of that, the screen started to flicker when I moved the mouse, so I returned that one the next day. This uh, here is my second unit. It also had the flickering issue, but it didn't run hot like the first one. The problem came up on both Windows 10 and Windows 11 developer preview. Uh, a, a colleague of mine had the QHD version and was experiencing the same problem on Windows 10. The solution, the solution we found was to downgrade the Intel UHD integrated graphics driver and the issue is now resolved. We have not had it flickering for about three weeks since the newer drivers were released by Intel. So now we can finally get into the review of this Razer Blade Advance. The specs we're reviewing on this blade are Intel 11th Gen Core i7 11700H uh, processor, Nvidia RTX 3070, 8 gigs of VRAM, 16 gigs of system RAM upgradable to 64 gigs, one terabyte SSD PCIe 4, and weighs about 4.4 pounds. Like all Razer Blade laptops, this one has a solid build, which you will appreciate after taking it right out of the box. So weighing in about four pounds in this well-made aluminum chassis, the Razer Blade Advance feels very sturdy with no cheap feeling flex throughout the body. The newer model blades now have a fingerprint resistant coating, so the smudging, while still apparent, isn't as bad as the previous units. It's actually easy to clean off, and of course, you can slap on a skin if you want, and none of that will matter anyway. On the back, you have the iconic and sometimes annoying glowing Razer Snake logo, which you can thankfully turn off in Razer Synapse. As far as ports go, Razer is adequately generous with them. On the left side, you have their proprietary 230 watt charging port, two USB 3.0 ports, and a Thunderbolt 3 power delivery port. On the right, you have a full-size SD card reader, another Thunderbolt 3 power delivery port, and another USB-A 3.0 port, and a full-size HDMI port. Yes, you can charge up to 100 watts on the USB ports, which is great uh, to stay powered during productivity work, but definitely not enough for gaming. As for the HDMI port, I had this connected to my 100 Hertz 35 inch 3440 by 1440 display at home and the 35 inch uh, 144 Hertz display at work without any issues. These full size ports and even the power delivery port come in clutch for working when you travel or go back and forth docking from home to office because you don't want to bring that huge power brick and extra adapters because they're all there. I don't have any Thunderbolt devices to test the performance of the Thunderbolt port and my external GPU is packed in, up in storage somewhere. Uh, but with a 3070 running on a 1080 or even a 
Quad HD display. Honestly, you can plug one in with a 3080 or a 3090 card, but you might as well build a desktop at this point. Uh, but if you want to test this out uh, with an eGPU connected, uh, let me know uh, in the comments. Now, let's talk about the screen. You know, initially I wanted the QHD 2040Hz model, and those were like the magical unicorn at the time because they never had them in stock anywhere. Uh, I think as of this writing, Razer re-released the QHD model with 165Hz because of panel issues from what I heard. Uh, so the blade we're looking at is the 15 inch 1080 display at 360 hertz and let me tell you there is no way i'm going back to any windows laptop at 60 hertz and i'm hoping that the upcoming macbooks uh, will have a faster refresh rate i really enjoy how smooth everything feels and the overall experience is amazing even though 360 hertz may be overkill for most people especially for those who do not competitively play uh, first person shooter games I like it a lot doing productivity work, especially scrolling through text and spreadsheets for work. You can adjust the refresh rate down to 60 hertz uh, to perhaps save some battery. There have been some tests that show that it doesn't make that much of a difference, but you probably probably wouldn't want to. Uh, for those who that do play first-person shooters and games in general, the fast refresh rate is highly appreciated, and you will want to get the faster refresh rate over the 4K 60Hz variants of the Blade Advance. But, you know, if you care about resolution over frame rates, uh, that option is there. Also, if you're docked most of the time to an external monitor, then of course none of this really matters. I don't do Photoshop on my PC and I do video editing on my M1 MacBook Air, so I can't really speak to the color accuracies for Adobe applications, but According to Anantec, uh, Razer has done a good job calibrating this display for most tasks. So I'm going to take their word for it because it, it looks pretty good to me. On top of the display, you have probably what is the worst 1080 camera on the market, period. I can't believe this piece of crap is really 1080. Even the stupid 720 camera on the MacBook looks better than this. Uh, yeah, Razer really skimped out on the webcam, which is Disappointing, especially for the price of this laptop. If you really need a better quality camera or for streaming or web conferences, get a $50 external one, because this is pretty bad. Now, another thing that they skimped out on, the internal speakers. These are pretty awful, and I'm starting to believe Razer acquired THX so they could slap on the sticker onto their laptops with crappy ass speakers. Here's a listen. To me, these sound like the old cell phones that have mono speakers on each side of the blade. Hollow, tinny, no bass at all. And so plan on using some headphones or connecting to an external speaker because if you really want to enjoy the sound of your games, uh, that's, that's the way to go. The G14 is way ahead of these speakers when it comes to sound and the blade is nowhere near the MacBook and even the iPad Pro. After typing with a Blade Advance for over a month, I've gotten used to it. You know, at first, coming from a G14 and the MacBook Air, I didn't love the Blade's keyboard, but I didn't hate it that much either. This is one of those situations where you know, your mileage may vary. The key travel, to me, isn't as good as you would find in either of those laptops, and for a 15-inch device, the layout feels rather cramped. Again, after you use it for maybe a week, you'll, you'll get used to it. As for the trackpad, I like it a lot. It's large, responsive, and I've had no issues. Uh, like most of the newer laptops, it uses Windows Precision drivers. It's going to be really hard using a smaller trackpad on other laptops, and it was just 
natural switching back between uh, this and the M1 MacBook Air. When you're gaming, you will most likely be using an external mouse anyway. I know that heat has always been an issue with gaming laptops, especially the ones running with an Intel processor, a high-powered CPU and GPU in a small enclosed place, space. It's pretty much unavoidable and of course the fans will start blasting when you are playing graphics and processor intensive games. On the first Blade Advance that I returned, it was burning hot right after booting into Windows. On this second Blade, I didn't have that problem. When running the Microsoft Office with Chrome or Edge tabs open, it was pretty consistent in the 40s and low 50s and the fan was pretty silent. When gaming, the temps go up into the upper 80s to 90s Celsius with the fans blasting. According to my Apple Watch, uh, sorry, that's as scientific, scientific as it gets with the tools that I have, the loudest the fans have reached is between 45 and 50 decibels. And to me, that's not bad while gaming. In an office environment when working, they're quiet enough and don't cause any disruption to the people around you or in a conference room. Now with all the work stuff out of the way, let's get into why anyone would buy this in the first place. The short version, this can easily run every game I throw at it over 60 FPS in high and ultra settings, thanks to the RTX 3070. It will laugh at games running on the 1080 display of the laptop. Uh, games like Control, Modern Warfare, or Warzone, uh, Paladins, Overwatch, Doom Eternal, and Tomb Raider run great at all the max settings. Speaking of benchmarks, let's take a look at some scores running on the native 1080 display. And take note that these are running at the latest beta of Windows 11 at the time of this video. Hey guys, Future Louie here, back on this crappy camera. Um, I need to re-emphasize that these benchmarks were done on Windows 11. Uh, based on what I've seen on other people's benchmarks on the exact same configurations, Windows 10 performance overall uh, is higher from about 5 to 10%, uh, depending on what version of Windows 11 is at that time, uh, as well as the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, Windows 11 is still in beta, and so I apologize for not testing this in Windows 10 first to give you a better view of this uh, performance. Um, also, another note, uh, when I get to talking about the performance on the external display, it takes a pretty big performance hit uh, from 3440 by 1440 resolution. Uh, if, if it matters, I am connected through the built-in HDMI port, uh, which I've done pre on previous laptops, uh, versus using a Thunderbolt port uh, to HDMI or display connection. Okay, all right, back to the video. I know that people buy these gaming laptops in place of desktops, so they're connected to an external display and obviously the performance is going to be different at a higher resolution. Here are some of the scores of the Blade Advance connected to a 35 inch 3440 by 1440 100 Hz display. Like, 
all gaming laptops, I'd advise against playing this with the lid closed when connected to a monitor so you get the best amount of airflow possible. Also, it's a bad idea to have this sit on a carpeted floor or on a soft surface such as a bed or on a couch. And most importantly, especially for dudes, don't play this on your lap. For those that are deciding between this and the AMD Ryzen Blade 14, the immediate recommendation would be to go for the Blade 14 because it runs a more efficient CPU for performance, battery life, and temps. The reason why I went for the Blade Advance was for upgradability. The Blade 14, no matter what configuration you get, which I hope they change that soon, you're stuck with 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs is plenty for most people for just about anything from productivity to gaming. Uh, for my work, I deal with multiple virtual machines in different test environments, uh, running proprietary software, so it makes sense to have more RAM. When you open the bottom panel, you have access to two upgradable RAM slots, which I've upgraded to the max and 64 gigs, uh, two M2, two M2 NVMe PS PCIe for SSD slots, uh, which I threw in another one terabyte, and you can also replace the Wi-Fi card, which hardly anyone ever does. And then there's the battery. Lots of people have reported that the battery has bloated from 12 to 18 months from owning a blade. Uh, my personal experience from the first 2016 Blade Stealth had a battery that was replaced for the first time earlier this year and it never bloated. Not to encourage Razer in any way to continue to use poor quality batteries, but at least these are easy and inexpensive to replace. Speaking of the battery, you'll get about five to six hours on 75% brightness for doing daily productivity work. Uh, gaming is less than a few hours and you obviously won't get the max performance without plugging in the power brick. Not the greatest in battery life overall, but it's pretty much expected with all that hardware packed in. But I do wish they had put in a 100 watt hour battery instead of just an 80 watt hour. Overall, I think this is a very good device if you actually will utilize its potential and truly know what to expect from Razer. The overall performance, upgradability, build quality, ports, and trackpad make this a very tempting and compelling purchase. However, the quality control and Razer's notoriously poor customer support are legitimately concerning when considering this laptop. Also, I do wish that the speakers and webcam were better, especially for something considered to be a premium gaming laptop. Razer products are excellent when they work and for the most part they do and you might not run into any issues. My recommendation, if you are going to buy this laptop or anything from Razer, do so from a reputable retailer with a good return policy and an extended warranty. So far, after owning this for a month after returning the first unit, it's been pretty great and there isn't a gaming laptop with this caliber of build quality with this level of performance. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.